One of the key features of our psychology is the ability to feel fear. While we mostly attribute fear as a negative emotion, it serves a vital purpose in that it makes us aware of threats and adapts our bodies to best address that fear, even if that means running away from it. But there is more than one type of fear. A short-term fear, for example, is when something suddenly happens that we weren't expecting and our body initiates the fight or flight response. Ever notice you often laugh after a jump scare in a movie? That's because our brain has recognized the danger is over and is now trying to calm you down with a positive emotion. But long-term fears, they are often more cerebral and tend to center on the question, what if they stay with you for hours, days, or even years afterwards? They keep you up at night as you sit there pondering them. Their impact is not as dramatic as say a jump scare where you get an adrenaline rush, but instead you will have that knot in your stomach or the little hairs on your neck that refuse to go back down. Here are five short stories that will stay with you long after this video has ended. So hit those lights, put on those headphones, and let's get started. The Han Air Base Werewolf. It's not always fun being the new guy, especially in the military, and for new American recruits at Han Air Base in West Germany during the Cold War, there was a specific initiation many of them had to endure. They would be told stories of a werewolf in the woods and then be made to patrol the perimeter at night, ideally on a full moon, while one of the dog handlers would take the biggest dog they had and use it to frighten the poor airman. However, while some of the older guys at the base reveled in the teasing, many of them knew the tales weren't part of any initiation. According to investigators from the University of Pittsburgh, one night in 1988, a security patrol found two dead deer within one of the wooded areas around the base. A third deer was found later. They radioed the security office and their supervisor came out to see for herself. He noticed that the animal's throats were damaged and two had their entrails and hindquarters eaten along with what appeared to be their internal organs. Later, they began hearing howls which unnerved the otherwise tough security team, leading to not so funny jokes that it was a werewolf. Suddenly, their radios came to life as two military policemen investigating a perimeter alert reported seeing a dog-like animal, which then stood up on its hind legs and looked at them before taking three long leaping steps and jumping over a high fence. Being brought out to try to locate the creature, one of the base's sniffer dogs went berserk with fear and refused to follow it. Another airman reported an incident where the beast apparently stalked him as he carried out his patrol. Investigations into local folklore revealed a story where a Napoleonic soldier deserted and killed a farmer and his wife. Before she dies, the wife supposedly cursed the soldier to become a werewolf. The Hitchhiking Seductress Tales of phantom hitchhikers are a common aspect of the ghost phenomena. Most of us, particularly in more rural areas, have heard stories of someone picking up a lonely wanderer from the side of the road in their car, thinking they are doing a good deed, only to find the person vanishes without a trace after a short drive. However, according to the paranormal investigator Gavin Davis, a spirit, or possibly a succubus, has staked a claim to a section of the A40 road in Pembrokeshire, Wales. He tells of the case of a terrified man known only as John who contacted him with an extraordinary story to tell in which one night, after a planned date didn't pan out as he'd hoped, he found himself driving along the A40 when he spied a young woman walking along the side of the road. He offered her a ride which she accepted and it soon became clear that she was suggesting a sexual liaison. The two of them walked into a public toilet and began their encounter during which John described smelling a foul odor emanating from her that overwhelmed him to such an extent that he couldn't breathe, and at one point he thought he would choke. Panic-stricken, he pushed the girl off himself, and he realized that her beautiful features were gone, and before him was a hideous old woman, apparently with a skin condition. After that, the woman vanished into thin air. Regarding the story's authenticity, Gavin said, Now I'm aware that stuff like this is often intended as erotica, and people have fantasies about it. And at first, I thought it was a wind-up call, but this man genuinely believes he was seduced by a paranormal entity. The Mist Have you ever been driving along and wondered if someone or something has sneaked into the back of your car? 
That's scary enough, but what if you weren't in a car, but flying in a military transport plane high over the South China Sea? That was the strange experience a US Air Force crew found themselves in during an otherwise routine mission in the Vietnam War. Robert Al Pollack was one of the crew members on board and he described the incidents that unfolded. He noticed a swirling gray mist start to materialize at the end of the aircraft near the cargo door. At first he assumed there was a mechanical problem, but no one on board could find anything wrong that would explain it. Having formed, it then began to move forward towards the stunned and apprehensive crew who kept backing away from it. Pollack was eventually consumed by the mist along with one of the engineers on board and both men reported that while they couldn't see through it, they couldn't smell or feel it either. After stepping back out, they watched as the mist began to retreat back to the rear of the aircraft, before dissipating almost in a complete reversal of how it appeared. Had the crew attracted the interest of some airborne entity? Find my body. On December the 11th, 2002, police in Surrey, England were alerted by motorists who had observed a crash on the A3 road Officers quickly attended the scene, expecting to find wreckage and possibly an injured motorist, but instead the road appeared clean. The officers were about to give up when one of them finally spotted a car slumped down in a ditch and covered in overgrowth, indicating it had been there for quite some time, and so probably was not the car they were looking for. Upon inspecting the vehicle, the officers made a grisly discovery. On the ground nearby was the skeleton of the driver, an investigation was launched, and using the victim's dental records, he was identified as 21-year-old Christopher Brian Chandler, who had been on the run from the police for nearly six months, having been accused of robbery. He had last been seen drinking in Hounslow, West London, before apparently fleeing to Surrey, but crashed en route. So what of the car that alerted the police to the scene six months later? No trace of it was ever found, and this has led some to believe that what the witnesses saw that night was the ghost of Chandler and his car replaying that fateful night, so his body could be located and buried, and he could find peace. The Nice Guy It's estimated that we will meet around 10,000 people in our lifetime. Obviously, only a fraction of these people will have any real meaningful impact on our lives, Yet every one of those meetings has the potential to change our lives forever. Maybe one of them would be your ideal partner. Maybe one could give you a coin that you could use to buy a winning lottery ticket. Maybe one of them will accidentally trip you up and leave you with a life-changing injury. Who really knows? Here is a tale from Reddit user, Can't Hardly Walk, that will make us all think about the next person we meet. Not by me, but a friend's dad, Roger. Roger was a hippie in Southern California during the late 60s. He played in some unsuccessful bands, did live sound to pay the bills, and continues to do so for a living. Knew a lot of people in that scene. One night he's out at a party in Topanga with no ride back into Los Angeles. A folk musician offers him a ride back down the hill. They hit it off. Roger says he's one of the nicest guys he's ever met. They say their goodbyes when the guy drops Roger off. The next week, Roger sees his friend on the news. It's Charles Manson. So that's five short little true horror stories. We hope you've enjoyed and are loving all of these videos this October. We'll see you back here tomorrow night for another creepy video.